Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another session of Ask Zak. Of course, with myself, Zak, and my trusted colleague, Sean. Welcome back, welcome back, and we're happy to see you again. Now, tonight, we're going to speak about basics of broiler farming. Now, first of all, do not start your farm if you haven't determined your market. I think that's one of the first things that we run into when we get into the field and we meet farmers. Now, first of all, of course, as, the, uh, as I explained, you need to uh, find out whether you're selling for live market or slaughtered market. And when you've uh, determined that, you of course have to determine your price. It doesn't help you come into the market way above all the other people unless you can deliver a very unique product. Then you might be, uh, can, then you can look at adding some value to your product. But if you uh, standard broiler farmer and you just want to sell live chickens or slaughtered chickens, make sure you're competitively priced. Don't even think about starting your farm if you haven't determined where your market's going to be. Because otherwise you're going to sit after six weeks raising uh, those uh, broilers and not, uh, well, and spe uh, spending all that money on those birds and at the end of the day, your money is stuck in the birds and you can't get those birds out. So very, very important, uh, everyone. Make sure you've got your market and you've determined that you're correct and you're ready for it. Then you can start looking at your uh, broiler farming. Now, uh, Sean, when we look at broiler farming, we always talk about start small uh, and grow into your business. Um, can you expand on that and explain to the farmers what that means when we talk about it? Well, Zach, uh, very important. If the, the reason why we say you must start small is that you must learn your system before you go big. Because if you learn your system, you, you get the ropes and you get to understand where my uh, weaknesses are, where my challenges are. If you do anything wrong in the early stages, then you can recognize when you're a big person. So the first thing to make sure that you're doing the right way when you start small is get the correct housing. The correct housing means your, your curtains should be facing the right direction. Your curtains should be facing a north direction and south direction. That, that, that's the length side. And then one of the most important things is your, your, your area is 12 birds to 15 birds per square meter depending on your temperature and ventilation system. If you get that in the correct direction, everything should actually try and fall into place. Zach. Now, of course, we cannot talk about broiler farming without uh, talking about biosecurity. Now, biosecurity, if I have to sum it up, is just your method or your, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, your precautions that you've put into place, your measures that you've put into place to prevent disease from entering into your uh, broiler house. It is a closed unit, so, and there's a lot of birds close to each other, so a disease can jump very easily. So make sure when we get onto farms, first thing we of course look for is when we go into the broiler house, is there a foot bath? Now the reason and the thinking behind a foot bath is, of course, when let's say we have visited the farm and there was a disease outbreak. Now we're walking amongst those birds and that disease gets stuck to our feet. And we get to your farm and we walk into your house. And of course, then we bring that disease in. Now a foot bath is one of the easiest and surest ways of preventing disease coming into your house. Of course, it's just not, uh, not applicable just upon us upon yourself, your workers, anybody entering that poultry house must go through a foot bath. Very, very important. And of course, uh, we're talking about limiting the people inside your house as well. Only the people that's working there should be able to go into that house and go through the foot bath. Another thing is, uh, the season is still good, but when we get into summer months, be prepared, we don't want to get an AI, uh, avian influenza outbreak again, but put up mesh around your uh, chicken house. Keep wild birds or any animals other than the chickens out of your poultry house. Remember, they can be carriers for diseases. And when you introduce a foreign animal, whether you've maybe bought in older chickens, we've saw, uh, seen that uh, this last week, uh, people buying in uh, chickens from an unknown source, you don't know what that animal has been exposed to and now you want to introduce it to your flock. I wouldn't do that. I would put it in a separate house just to make sure those animals might not contaminate my uh, poultry house. So very important. There are a lot of measures, uh, but these are very basic ones just to get you get uh, started. So Sean, let's start uh, at the beginning. 
you've, you've prepared the house, you've just touched on that. And of course, now we're introducing our first checks. Now we're looking at heating. Why is heating important and what should the people be looking out for? Well, the basics about your broiler farming is that your chicks, when you receive them, they have no function of controlling their temperature. So you must just help them to keep alive. If you don't manage their temperature very well, they will struggle to keep uh, their body temperature well, and then they're going to use your feet to keep warm, or maybe they will even die. So now we must manage our heating pro uh, program very well. One of the most important things is when you receive your chicks, always remember, they need at least 30 degrees Celsius in their house. So you need to prepare your house the day before to make sure your house is at 30 degrees Celsius at least in the house or else you're going to struggle with your temperature and from there onwards every every third day you will drop the temperature by one degree Celsius until you reach approximately 22 degrees Celsius where there will be about 30 weeks uh, 30, 33 weeks so 33 days not 30, 30 weeks 32 days or 33 days so approximately there you will reach about 22 uh, degrees Celsius always make sure your temperature is in good condition People have been struggling in winter because uh, load shedding, all sorts of other challenges you're facing. So this is what we can, this is what you can use to manage your temperature in your house. One thing that you need importantly is your thermometer. Without a thermometer, you're running wild as a headless chicken. So you must make sure you have an idea where I'm going. You need a thermometer. Put your thermometer at knee length of your chickens. And after putting your thermometer at knee length of your chickens, to heat your house, you need what we call infrared lights. You need electric brooders. You need gas brooders. You can choose one of the other or have multiple ones depending on your situation. But always make sure your heating program is in good condition or else their chickens are going to use your feed, your water and other things to stay alive which breaks your pocket at the end of the day. Please make sure, Zach. That's very important. Now another thing is, and I like how you explain it, Sean, uh, when we talk about a red light, you must think about a heater. When we talk about normal lights, we're talking about natural light, uh, the light that helps us see. But the red light goes through as a heater. Now what I want to talk, touch on now is, of course, our natural light, the light that we see with. Now that is crucial for your broiler's growth. Now your lighting periods, they differ right through the growing stage of the chicken. But first of all, that first week we usually leave the lights on uh, uh, for at least 24 hours. We want to get those chicks to eat that starter. There's a lot of protein, we need to develop that body, so that's why we leave on the lights. But after that, we start scaling down, and up until the end you get here to uh, about four weeks, you're working on natural daylight. Now we get a lot of farmers that leave the lights on 24-7 right through the, uh, through the chicken's growth period, and that is a crucial mistake because you're going to lose money. What happens is, the lights stimulate the animal to eat, to move and be active. So if we leave on the lights, that chicken is going to be active, especially if we've got our temperatures right, they're going to eat and eat and eat, and the body's going to grow and keep on growing. And it's going to grow so fast that the heart can't keep up. And here by four weeks, we call it uh, sudden death syndrome or flip overs, the animal gets a heart attack and really just squawks and dies and falls onto its back. And that is usually because people aren't managing their natural lights very well. So check out for that. Be very attentive on how you manage your light. Just take a normal example. If I leave the lights on for you for four weeks without letting you sleep at all, what's going to happen to your body? You're not going to be in a good place. So be very aware of it, people. Uh, we need to make sure that we manage our natural light and not our red lights. That is a heater. Very, very important. And of course, now, Sean, I've touched on it just quickly with the lights, but now our lights determine our feeding. But what should we feed our broilers? Well, here at Alzu, we have two uh, versions of our broiler feed. We have a super version and a standard version. The difference is that the super version, we always recommend it for people who are not selling to the live market. It's a quick touch and then it reaches their growth very well and then they can slaughter their chickens and have them in the market. But then the standard version, we usually recommend it for your live chickens. That's where you will find out that the standard version has a maintenance while the super version doesn't have a maintenance. So you start with your starter, starter your grower, your finisher and your maintenance. Your maintenance is keeping them alive while your, uh, your customers come in and buy them. So it's very important very key do follow the procedure on when to feed what and how because if you feed the wrong thing at the wrong time you will mess up your production cycle 
the, the one of the most important things that you must always remember as a broiler farmer is that you are managing your growth within a short period of time. You're not aiming to get them out in six weeks, you're aiming to get them out of the certain weight as soon as possible. Always remember that. And then, as we've touched on it, heating is very important. If you do not manage your heating, they won't eat or they will not eat, they will eat too much. If you do not manage your heating, your growth will not be good enough. Then you, you will be held with your, your chickens for way longer than you expect. So feed the right feed at the right time and make sure your house is as comfortable as this. Your chickens, if they're comfortable, they will grow, they will eat, drink and grow out of control. That's, that's all from me, So, and of course, the next step, of course, is vaccination. Now, the easiest way for me to explain a vaccination is it's the ID of the disease. So you're giving the bird the ID of that disease. So when the disease arrives, the body can react immediately and sort out the disease and you don't sit with losses. Now, there are two diseases we mainly uh, vaccinate for when it comes to our broilers. The first one is Newcastle disease. It is a very aggressive disease. I know some people say, no, I've never struggled with uh, Newcastle until the day that uh, disease arrives and then you sit with a mortality if a rate of more than 50%. You are lucky if 50% of your birds survive, but uh, usually it's less than that. And you don't want to be that. You've, uh, there. You've spent so much time, so much money to get that animal into the right condition. And now all of a sudden, just because you didn't give the animal's body that uh, idea of the disease, it cannot fight it and you get the mortalities. The second one, Gamboro. Gamboro, it's difficult to uh, just identify by looking at your animals, but basically it's autoimmune disease, if I can simplify it like that. It basically attacks the chicken's immune system, so it breaks it down, so when any other disease arrives, uh, it can overwhelm the chicken. So we do vaccinate for Gamboro. Now, when you come to our farmer's days, of course, we will share all that information with you. But to go on now with our session, of course, Sean, equipment. We talked about the, uh, the vaccination, we talked about the uh, correct feeding, but a lot of times we run into farms where we struggle with uneven growth, and usually it's because of equipment. Why are we looking at that? Zach, it's very definite. Your, <clears throat> your eating, your feeding program is based on enough equipment and at the right positioning. So on average, we always say three drinkers or three feeders per hundred chickens. If you, if you cut down on that, you're cutting down on 15% of your chickens which are not going to get feed or which are not going to get the water. And then you'll have all these young small chickens and big chickens in the same house. So always make sure. Give the, right, the correct equipment at the right time and also please use uh, chick feeders instead of just normal chick, uh, uh, feeders, big feeders. Because your chicks need to be able to reach into the feed. Your chicks need to be able to reach into the water. If you use big uh, uh, feeders and drinkers, your chickens are going to struggle to reach the water and the feed, and then your growth is going to be difficult. It's going to be a, a very difficult situation. So always make sure you give the right uh, uh, equipment, you use the right equipment at the right time, and make sure there is enough. There is enough. Because most of the time, if you don't have enough, some of your chickens will not have feed to eat, will not have the time to drink because every time when it goes to go drink, there's always another chicken, other chickens drinking, other chickens eating. So always make sure. And very important, grow with them. If you don't grow with them, it also uh, increases a little bit of uh, effort to, to have to eat. If you don't place your, your, your feeders and drinkers at the right height, it gives a little bit too much effort. You, your chickens use a little bit too much effort to drink. They use a little bit too much effort to eat. Then they stop eating enough. They don't drink enough. So when they grow, raise your feeders. Raise your uh, uh, drinkers. On average, they say, we say hang them because they come with the rope, most of them. So hang them, increase the height so that when they eat, they're at level position instead of crouching down or having to lift themselves up to eat. Very important, your chickens are there to eat and grow. Comfortable chickens eat, drink and grow. Now, we've touched on a lot of information here, but if you need more in-depth information, come to our information sessions where we share in depth of every facet that we touched on. We share with you and teach you and train you. Now Sean, where are you guys busy this week? Well this week we're in Carolina, we're having a nice information day there. Just call into Carolina, also brunch and then confirm a space and we shall be there to have a great day with you and feel free to come in because at that point you have the opportunity to ask each and every question that you've ever held back and that you want to ask. Feel free. So remember, this Thursday, Carolina, 
call in, book a seat, and we'll meet each other there. So until next uh, next week, same time, same place. We're looking forward to talking to you. Of course, we share, always try and share uh, relevant information to assist you as farmers because we want to transfer knowledge. But from my side, have a good evening and good night. And from my side, have a good day and have a good evening. And always remember, at the end of this video, there's all our contacts on where you can reach out and reach all our branches. Have a good one.